everybody. Welcome back to Chiquelle's YouTube channel. My name is Amanda and today I'm here to talk to you guys about the truth about synthetic fibers. So synthetic fibers on wigs, synthetic fibers on toppers, synthetic fibers on hair extensions, synthetic fibers anywhere you find them. I'm going to give you all the details because let me tell you, there is definitely a place in this world for synthetic hair. There are so many wonderful things about it, but there's also some things to note just just so you know <laughs> there's some things that aren't as wonderful that i just want to make sure everybody knows before they get into it so stay tuned for all the pros and all the cons of synthetic hair and before i dive in i'm just going to remind you to like this video and subscribe to my channel where you can learn even more about alternative hair okay so synthetic hair i know that when people first get into the wig world or the topper world or the alternative hair world the word synthetic is scary because it's not real people think right away that oh my goodness synthetic hair is going to look fake it's going to look like i'm wearing a wig and i don't want any part of it but then they go and look at the price of human hair and they're like oh shoot i can't afford that guess i'm gonna have to go to synthetic hair but they know they have to just succumb to the synthetics because of the cost I also know that a lot of people, when they think of synthetic hair, they think about Halloween costumes and just the crazy shininess and the horrible, horrible appearance of those funny little costume wigs that you get at a Halloween store. I am here to tell you that synthetic wigs do not need to look like that. And there are so many beautiful things about them. So why don't we start off with the pros of synthetic hair? Let me begin by telling you that there are two kinds of synthetics that you'll probably hear about along your journey. There is synthetic, and then there is heat-defiant synthetic or heat-friendly synthetic. Those are the same things. So there's two different kinds, and although they're both synthetic, and although this conversation has to do with them both, there will be little things about each of them that I will discuss in a, as I go so that you can kind of figure out the difference between them and see maybe what works best for you. So most of what I say will technically cover both of those types of synthetics, but I will clarify if there's anything different about each of those synthetics that I want you to know. Okay. The one pro about synthetic hair that is probably the best pro is that it is much cheaper than human hair. With a lot of luxury Remy human hair, the really good quality human hair, you're going to find those prices well over a thousand dollars usually. You know, depending on the length and the type of cap, there's, you know, a lot of things you need to take into account for it. But overall, human hair is going to run pretty expensive, whereas synthetic hair is going to run way cheaper. So that is a huge bonus to synthetic hair, of course. The next wonderful thing about synthetics, which I absolutely love because I'm a lazy girl at heart, is that synthetic hair has style memory. And what I mean by that is the style is baked into the piece and it's not going anywhere. Even if you brush it, even if you get it wet, that style is going to bounce right back to the style that it came in. So if you are a lazy girl like I am and just want to be able to throw something on your head and get out the door, synthetic hair is where it's at. If you have human hair, you generally have to style that and actually work with it to make it look like something you want it to. Synthetic hair comes in the style you want, stays in the style you want. And that's the exact same for heat defined synthetic hair as well. So if you were to get stuck in the rain, if you were to wash your synthetic piece or your heat synthetic piece, then by the time it's dry, it's just gonna go back to the way it was. So you don't need to worry about that style ever going away if you add water to it or if you brush it out. And that point kind of leads me to the next point that synthetic wigs are pretty low maintenance. And when I say low maintenance, I mean like on a daily basis, you don't have to do much to them because the style is already there. You know, you have to give it a shake, get a little comb, put it on your head, do a little fluff, and then it's ready to go. Now, even though I am saying that on a daily basis, synthetic wigs are pretty low maintenance because they're just really easy to put on and go, I am going to warn you that later on when I talk about the cons, I'm going to also talk about how, in a way, 
they can also be higher maintenance in the long run. But I'm going to get to that when I talk about the cons because we're talking about all the good things right now. <laughs> okay, another fabulous thing about synthetic hair or heat defiant synthetic hair is that it has amazing color retention. You are going to get your wig with a vibrant, bright color and it's going to stay that way. It's not going to fade from the sun. It's not going to wash out when you wash your wig or get it wet. That color that it comes in is going to stay like that. Now, not only does the color of your synthetic wig stay and not fade like a human hair piece would, and you would have to technically get that recolored ever so often, you're gonna find that there is a broader spectrum of colors to choose from for synthetic pieces. It's also easier to do um, exercise or any kind of physical activity with synthetic hair because not only is synthetic hair a little bit lighter overall than human hair, but again, with the style memory, you don't need to worry about your style going away. You can work out in your wig and then head off to work and your hair is still going to look fabulous. So everything that I've said that's wonderful about synthetic fibers um, all has to do with synthetic and heat friendly synthetic. There's not really any discrepancies for those. We will come to some differences. However, when I talk about the cons, which is what I'm going to roll into right now. Oh, by the way, I am wearing a synthetic piece right now. This, well, I should say a heat-friendly synthetic piece. This is Seam Stealer by Raquel Welch. <clears throat> oh, my voice. In the color Shaded Biscuit, RL19 slash 23SS, I think is the color code. <laughs> However, with this piece, I have cut it in the front a little bit so that the front bits aren't as droopy and long. And I've also completely straightened it. Okay, let me talk about the cons now of synthetic and heat defined synthetic. Okay, the first thing I will note is that synthetic pieces can look shiny. So I know I talked about Halloween costume wigs in the beginning looking super shiny and unrealistic. Um, those are like on a whole extra level of shininess, extreme <laughs> level. If you're getting a good quality synthetic wig, it's not going to be as shiny as that. However, it still might be a little bit shiny depending on the color, depending on the brand. Um, it, it varies to be honest, but let me show you here. So this right here is a synthetic piece. Um, you can see a little bit of shine coming off it when I move it. See, um, but heat friendly synthetic pieces are going to have a little bit more of a matte look to them. I'm wearing heat friendly here. Heat friendly is not as shiny as synthetic is going to be. Heat friendly is going to have a little bit of a more realistic appearance to it than your synthetic pieces. Now, if you do find that your synthetic pieces are a little bit too shiny for your liking, then you can take some dry shampoo. Um, any dry shampoo generally does the trick and just spray it generously all over. And you can get dry shampoo just at any standard drugstore. But also know that over time, the synthetic shininess that you see is going to dull down. So all of the pieces come with sort of a, like a silicone coating over top of the synthetic to help protect it and help keep it smooth and lovely. But over time, as you wash it and as you wear it, that is gonna dull and it's not gonna be so, so shiny as it, you continue to wear it. Because sometimes out of the box, you open a box, you take out your wig and you're like, ah, I'm blinded <laughs> by the shine. But I promise it dulls, it goes, it doesn't go away, but it goes a little bit away. <laughs> okay, another con of synthetic hair is that you can't really dye them um, as easily as you could human hair. You can't use human hair dye on synthetic. You would have to use a special synthetic dye, which is, it's hard to do, it's hard to come by, um, and it's just way different than dyeing human hair and a lot harder. So I don't necessarily recommend dyeing your synthetic piece, especially if you're trying to get like a very specific color, a very specific look. Um, just dyeing synthetics overall is not easy. <laughs> Another con of synthetic hair is that you can't style them with heat. Now, just note that I am specifically now talking about synthetic, not heat defined synthetic. I'll get there in a minute. Synthetic fibers, strictly synthetic, you cannot add dry heat to it like a hair straightener, like a curling iron, like a hot comb. Any of those hot tools that you would normally use on your human hair cannot be put on synthetic fibers because you're gonna melt the fiber and frizzle them right up and singe them. And then your wig is ruined and it's horrible. 
And along that same note, you need to be very careful around barbecues and ovens and the stove um, because high heat blasting in your face could potentially ruin your wig. I know that I have opened an oven before and, you know, 450 degrees of heat is coming at me and I singed the front of my of my wig. So you just have to be really careful with your synthetics around heat. However, that being said, wet heat is actually okay for synthetics. So something like a fabric steamer is going to be actually a really good friend for you if you have a synthetic piece because it helps with some styling and it helps take the dryness and the frizziness away that we're going to talk about in a minute. Okay, now heat friendly synthetic on the other hand, that can take heat. So in my opinion, that's kind of a pro. <laughs> so heat defined synthetic, you can use a hair straightener up to 350 degrees. You can use a curling iron, a hot comb, a blow dryer, any of those things that you would use on human hair, you can use them on heat friendly synthetic or heat defined synthetic fibers. And you can use that to style it however you'd like. But just know that as soon as you add heat of any kind to your synthetic piece, let's say you used a fabric steamer on your synthetic piece, or if you add heat of any kind to your heat friendly pieces, that is going to forever change what your piece is going to look like. So let's say you had a lovely curl pattern in your hair. As soon as you put a hair straightener through that on your heat friendly piece, it's gonna straighten it and you're not gonna get that wave or curl back, even if you wash it. Once you've added heat, it has completely changed the fiber forever. So that's the same with your synthetic piece. If you were to take a steamer on it and straighten it out with a steamer, that has now changed that piece forever. Now, along the lines of adding heat to heat-friendly pieces, although I'm saying that is a pro that you can use heat on it, I also find it to be a little bit of a con because it's trickier than human hair. Human hair, it's pretty easy to take a curling iron and curl it and it's totally fine. Heat defiant fibers um, are a little bit more tedious and need a little bit more work and precision. Because they are still a synthetic fiber, they need to do something called cool set. So you can't just try to curl your piece pretend my finger is a curling iron <laughs> and then let go because it's just gonna droop and flop and just be straight. You need to curl it, hold it, keep it in that curl, let it cool and then release so that it stays. So like I said, styling with heat, your heat friendly pieces is a little tedious and it does take some work in order to master and it does take the proper tools in order to do what you want to do, if that makes any sense. Straightening your hair, on the other hand, is generally pretty easy though. Okay, one of the cons that I just really don't love about synthetic pieces that tends to be a surprise for a lot of people, I find, is that synthetic hair gets frizzy. Ooh. And when I say frizzy, I mean like at the ends of your fibers, they're gonna start to frizz up. And when they frizz up, they get that feeling of being really dry and poofy and not very smooth looking. So let me show you what I mean. Although this is a heat defiant piece, um, heat defiant and synthetic both get frizzy, but heat defiant pieces get frizzier faster, just so you know. So if you want to eliminate the frizziness as much as you can, then um, synthetic piece does better for frizziness. It doesn't not frizz because it definitely does, but heat friendly fibers frizz more quickly. Okay, um, I'm showing you the frizz that's happening at the end here. I purposely did not fix this so that I could show you what it's gonna look like. So that is looking dry and brittle and icky. So it's not very pleasant. Um, when you get the frizziness in your heat friendly fibers, it's really easy to fix though, because you can use heat on it. And heat is something that you absolutely need in order to maintain your heat friendly fibers. So what I would do for this is I would go and take my hair straightener or my blow dryer brush and go through it and once I do that, it's gonna straighten these fibers out. It's gonna take away all that frizz and they're gonna be left to look and feel like brand new again. And now, like I said, how heat-friendly fibers frizz a lot more quickly than synthetic, 
that means that you do have to use heat on your heat friendly fibers quite often, like every wear even sometimes because they do frizz up pretty quick. Now, although synthetic pieces also frizz, um, they don't frizz as quickly, like I mentioned. And if you were to try and fix that, what you would do then is use a fabric steamer. And a fabric steamer, I would just um, put at the ends of your hair so that you don't wreck the rest of the style that comes into your wig. Because if you do go through the whole wig, it's gonna completely straighten it all. And I mean, maybe you want that and that's totally fine. But if you don't wanna wreck the style it has going on, then try your best to stick to the ends. Another con about synthetic hair and heat synthetic hair is that it tangles pretty easily. Um, a general rule of thumb is the longer your synthetic piece is, the more it's going to tangle. And I mean, that's, I guess, the same as human hair as well. If you have really long human hair, it's going to get tangly, but synthetic hair really tangles like it really does so if you have a long long piece just be prepared to carry a wide tooth comb with you and be prepared to comb it throughout the day many times <laughs> you will probably get frustrated with the tangles and wish that it didn't happen and <laughs> want to throw your comb across the room but it's just kind of the nature of these synthetic fibers. And now as I'm saying this, I should let you know that heat friendly fibers are going to tangle and clump more than synthetic and more easily, I should say. Actually this morning when I went to drop my kids off at school, I wore a long heat friendly piece and I purposefully did not brush it. So I could show you that even just from me, um, I literally put the wig on, got in my car, dropped them off at school and came back. I didn't, I was gone for like 20 minutes. Um, even though that's all I did, this is kind of the situation that happened. So a lot of tangliness starts to happen at the nape and the, by the nape, I mean this area here and at the part that's closest to your back. So this one's pretty tangly. Well, not pretty, but it's tangly enough. Um, and it's hard to run your fingers through, even though I just washed this recently. So just know that synthetic pieces and heat friendly synthetic pieces are gonna tangle and clump. <laughs> Another con about synthetic hair is that it's not gonna last as long as human hair. Human hair can last you years and still look beautiful. Synthetic hair, I would say, would last you a few months um, before having to intervene. And when I say intervene, I mean before having to, you know, add steam to fix the ends of your fibers or, you know, cut it a bit or change it up so that it continues to look fresh. Synthetic fibers just do not last as long as human hair unless you do something to fix it. Okay, I think that is all I have to share with you. I think that's all of my pros and cons. Oh, that was an extensive list. But if you guys have any more wonderful things about synthetics or even some, you know, not so great things, feel free to put them in the comments and share them with all your friends here. Because like I've mentioned before, I am not the only person that knows a thing or two about wigs. There are so many of you who have that knowledge to share. And I just want this to be a place where there's just a wealth of knowledge for everyone to come to and just see. I hope this gave you a little bit of an insight on synthetic fibers. I know they can be scary and daunting and I know that we just want them to be perfect, <laughs> but at the end of the day, they're not. And we just kind of have to learn how to work with them and once you learn that and once you embrace them, synthetics are really wonderful. And they're also gonna save you a bit of money. <laughs> so with all of that being said, I'm gonna go, but I really appreciate you guys being here with me today and watching and following along with me. And I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye everybody. Bye.